In this video, we're going to have a look at the new Get Data experience for Power BI paginated reports. We're going to look at how it improves the way that you clean data using Report Builder, as well as some limitations that I found when I was trying to implement it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So paginated reports are something that I covered already several times in the past and it's essentially a way for you to create pixel perfect paginated reports. If you used SQL Server reporting services or SSRS in the past, you're going to feel right at home because it's almost exactly the same. However, the issue with getting into paginated reports, if you're coming from the Power BI report Power BI desktop world is that all of the UI seems very outdated. I mean, from my experience working with SSRS many, many years ago, it feels like the UI hasn't really changed all that much. So if you're coming in as a Power BI developer with all of these kind of fancy UI and editors that you use to make it a little bit easier for you, especially if you're a beginner, coming in fresh into paginated reports and report builder can be intimidating. Now, don't get me wrong. There are lots of functionalities and customizability options with the report builder, which I think if you know all of the kind of expressions, you can get a lot out of it. However, the experience that you get as a developer in report builder is nothing like what you have in the Power BI desktop where it's almost all kind of visual development experience. So let's have a look at this example report that I built in paginated reports for Power BI in a previous video. It's an invoice demo report that lets you generate invoices for various customers and clients. And it was essentially created as a intro or a gateway into how to set up reports in sort of paginated reports. Now to do this, there were a couple of things that I needed to set up. I needed to set up a connection to my SQL server database, and then I needed to create the different data sets that I use in the actual report itself. And let's have a look at one of the data sets that I've created here, which is the orders data set. So if we go orders and hit dataset properties. If you work with SQL, you will pretty much understand how this works. So it just lets you select a bunch of different columns from different tables and the joins at the bottom just sets the relationships across all of these tables so that report builder knows how they are related so that you can kind of build them all into this one query. Now, you could argue that you can use Query Designer to bring this up or to have a more visual experience. But if you're purely just working on SQL uh, syntax like this, and you're coming in from Power BI desktop, this can be or this can look fairly intimidating because the experience is nothing like Power BI desktop and it might take you a little bit of time. I mean, I'm sure you can do it, but it might take you a little bit more time. Uh, to learn all of this and make it work as you normally would in Power BI Desktop. So to solve this issue, the Power BI team has released the Get Data Experience, the Power Query Experience that you get in Power BI Desktop, and it's now also available in paginated reports for the report builder. So to take advantage of this new experience, you need to make sure that your report builder is up to date. So just download and install the latest version of the report builder. And you also need to be logged in to your Power BI service account. So you will know that because your name would be on the top right and it will prompt you to log in before you can start using this anyway. So to start working with it, you need to go to the data ribbon at the top once you have updated your report builder and you will find this get data experience. Now it's still in preview, so that's just one thing to bear in mind if you want to use it, but it is fully functional as of now. Now, when I first downloaded and installed report builder to open this up, I have encountered some unknown issues. So if you're having that issues, I simply just restarted my computer and it seemed to fix the issue. So it won't even open the Power Query editor when I opened uh, the get data from here. So that's one thing to bear in mind if you are using it for the first time. 
So actually, I'm not going to open it here. I'm going to open it up in a blank report here so that I can preview to you how the get data experience looks like. So from here, we're going to simply select data and get data. So this is the pretty much the Power Query editor experience, which you will be familiar with if you work with Power BI Desktop. There are a number of options for you to pull from as a source if you want to. So uh, you have your, you know, your typical sources here, your SQL databases, SharePoint lists, Excel workbooks. You also have a bunch of other sources that you can pull from, which already is a massive improvement compared to what you could do uh, before in, in the report uh, builder. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to pull from a data flow because I've already set up a data flow for this demo. And we're going to choose one of these uh, data flows for Microsoft Fabric. I'm going to use one of the already created connections that I have for this service that I have um, where I've created my data flow. If we hit next, is going to bring up this list of workspaces and environments that I can pull from. And I know that I have that data flow set up in this specific workspace, cross report drill, drill through. And I'm going to bring in just one of these tables. So let's say, let's bring in the products uh, table here. If we hit transform data, there we go. As you can see, it gives you the full Power Query experience, which I hopefully don't have to explain to you why this is super powerful, especially if you're working with paginated report. So imagine cleaning up your data before loading it up into your data sets. In the past, you would have to use the SQL statements. So using the select statements in order to manage, transform and clean your data. Now you can use Power Query Editor like you would in Power BI Desktop to clean it visually. So it gives you a preview of what your data looks like every time you add a step. You can use any of the you know different cleaning tools that Power Query gives you, adding new columns, doing some calculations and groupings, which I think is a very powerful experience. So for now, we're not going to do any cleanup, but you do have that option available for you. Uh, let's say we are pretty much happy with the setup that we have here. We're going to hit Create. And it will give you some, it will give you a notification here saying that it's been created successfully. So if we hit OK, you will now see two things. It will create the data source connection for you, the data flow connection, as well as the data sets that you have selected, the products. You will see the different columns that we have set up there in our uh, mashup in mQuery. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So you can start working with it, uh, building reports out of your data sets that you have loaded. One thing that you will notice though is that there is no transform data here to open up Power Query Editor again. So if you want to edit the data model or the, the data sets that you have just created, you simply just right click on that data set and hit Edit Mashup. It will just bring up the Power Query Editor uh, window for you, for you to be able to kind of manage it. I sometimes get this error when I hit manage. So you just simply just need to reconnect to it and that should fix that issue. Now that you know the basics of how you can use the get data experience to bring in and transform your data into report builder, let's have a look at some of the limitations and the confusions that I found when I was trying to work and use this uh, experience. So to start with, let's, uh, let's Actually, let's get out of this experience and let's let, let's reset back to uh, being an empty report. We're going to go to get data as before. And we're going to bring in a few things. So we're going to go to the data flow once more. So data flow like this, use the default connection and use our cross report drill through northwind orders and let's bring in two tables here let's bring in uh, order details which has the orders individual orders it only has product id so i want to see which products those are so we're going to also bring in the products table over here so if we hit transform a very typical scenario you might want to do is do a merge because this is normally how you would uh, do it. So you would uh, 
I mean, unless you're working in Power BI Desktop, you can use relationships. But in this case, we just want to work with uh, just one table, for example. So pretty simple, right? So you just uh, typically you would disable the load for the table that you don't want to use and on the order details table you'll go to merge yeah merge queries over here we'll merge it with the products table using the product ID as the matching table so once we've merged we bring in the product name like this so now you will have for the list, your order details list, a product name for each of them. So this makes it a lot easier for you to read and maybe create some grouping to see how much uh, in sales or how much unit price are for every product that has been sold. That's it, right? So uh, what you would expect, because we have disabled the products table, is that you will just have one query or one data set in report builder, which is order details. Now, watch what happens when I hit create. What it will do is it will create one data set and its products. Remember, we disabled products table so that we only have the order details table. We didn't get the order details table, we only got the products table. Why is that? So after reading the documentation, it turns out that on the get data experience, it only returns the last query from the mashup. So if you have multiple queries in the same get data experience, it only loads the last uh, query in that list, no matter if it's disabled or not. So at the moment, if we hit edit mashup here, to go back to the view where we were creating our you know our transformations because the products query is at the very end of this that is what's being previewed or or returned by the uh, get data experience not the order details and as you can see we have this configure connection issue apart from that it doesn't respect the disable load so you have here enable loads you were able to do it uh, but when you edit the mashup, it's like nothing happened. So that's a pretty glaring issue. So it seems like moving the query to the bottom fixes the issue, but already the data set name hasn't been updated, just the contents of it. So that kind of makes it a little bit confusing because in the normal Power Query experience, you'd expect the queries or all of the kind of enabled queries to create a separate separate data sets uh, in this list. So that's one thing that I noticed that could be a little bit confusing. Just remember that the last query in your mashup uh, would be is the only one that is going to be loaded. So you're probably thinking to yourself, what if you want to import another table from the same source? Well, you actually don't do it from this mashup you because each get data experience only results into one data set uh, results so which means that if you want to import another table for example you need to go through that same get data experience so let's say let's go to get data again and we want if we want to bring up uh, or load another table from our uh, from our same data flow we just go through the exact same experience find the table that we want to bring in. Let's say orders, hit create. And as you can see, it creates a new data set, the orders. It doesn't create a new data source because they're pulling from the same uh, type of connection, but it does let you create multiple tables, albeit from kind of two different get, get data experience. The problem with this dynamic though, uh, as I saw, is that you know while we are loading multiple data sets from the same source, you don't have the same experience that you have in Power BI Desktop in the Power Query Editor where let's say you want to now combine the two data sets, products and orders, you because they are from, or they are managed by two different mashup uh, as an experience, you can't really merge them or you know create relationships to them or create measures to them uh, unless you use expressions in the Power BI Report Builder, which which sort of defeats the whole purpose of 
having the get data experience to begin with. Another small gripe that I have with this new get data experience is if I want to connect to a local database that doesn't require kind of authentication. So if we go back to my old report here, if you look at the data source here, I'm going to hit data source properties. As you can see, there is nothing here that forces me to add any credentials. And in fact, you can choose the current Windows user or don't use credentials. This local host database is something that's only accessible to me because it's installed in my local machine. So don't really need to use any um, any connections or, or any credentials to access this. So if you do a test connection here, you will see that the connection is successful because I don't really need to use any credentials here. But if I want to use uh, the same thing or do the same thing using the get data experience, because I want to manage and transform my data into uh, using Power Query Editor, because I'm more familiar with Power Query Editor than I am now with the SQL Editor. So you would normally go through this experience SQL Server you will say the server is called localhost and the database is called northwind as you can see there's no way for me to go through the next stage without having to you know like leaving the username and password empty so neither any of these won't work i've already tried uh, which I don't really understand why they're forcing me to add or use some kind of authentication or use credentials. So this will, when I at least when I tested it, it never worked. So that means if I want to use the Power Query Get Data Experience in Report Builder using my local database, I need to set up kind of my credentials. It's just a small gripe that I have because I wanted to use SQL Server or my database with this experience. And that's really it for this video. Now I think the addition of the Power Query Editor experience in Report Builder is very, very powerful and it kind of makes it a little bit easier for developers to start or get started with Report Builder. It still has a lot of limitations. So if you want to learn more about these different limitations and considerations, if you want to use this, I'll leave a link in the description box below uh, for the blog post where they list out all of the all of these limitations. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.